good morning everyone welcome to this new lecture under the same module so in this module we'll practice few numerical examples if you recall our discussion in the previous lecture so in the previous lecture as well we practice few numerical examples about sizing of digester that is volume of the digester so in this lecture as well we'll practice few examples in the similar line but with slight different approach so if you see the statement of first example here in this we need to calculate the volume of biogas digester which is suitable for the output of one pigri farm so there is a one pigri farm so the output of that particular pigri farm is utilized to produce a biogas so if you see the number of the pigs in that particular farm is given here so this gas which is produced based on that we need to also calculate the thermal power which is available from this particular gas so the example is very clear that we need to design one biogas plant first and from that particular biogas plant some thermal energy is being produced for some application purpose so now that particular thermal power which is available from that produce by gas is also need to be calculated in this example if you see the content the given data here is burner efficiency so the burner efficiency is given here because we need to calculate the thermal power so the gas produce is getting burn so as a result the burning efficiency of that particular burner is 0.6 the heating value of that biogas is mentioned here is 20 megajoule per meter cube now if you see here the value the value is slightly different than the value range which we have discussed in the module and it all depends on the feed stock as well as the biogas composition as well so that's why here the calorie value which is mostly here the parameter of the composition of the biogas as a result here the composition is such that this value is coming to be around 20 megajoule per meter cube now the density of the slurry is given as this much so this is slight change here because here we are trying to find out the volume based on the slurry density and the percentage of dry matter contained is 9% so as we know for any digester the solid content in the slurry should be around 9 to 10% so whereas it is mentioned the 9% is the dry matter content in the waste and the biogas yield if you see here it is 0.24 m3 per kg of dry matter so this value is also depends on the feed stock which is being used and based on that the yield also changes so this entirely is a parameter of the feed stock which is being used for the biodigestion purpose the retention time given here is 25 days and the produce dry manure is 0.3 kg per day per head so now with this given data we need to estimate the volume of the digester and based on that particular volume the gas which is getting produced is being used for the thermal power so based on that we need to calculate the thermal power let us try to solve this example in a step wise manner so first as we know we have the dry matter produced by so it is very easy to calculate because we know the numbers and then we know the dry matter in the manure so it is around 0.3 so we know this many numbers so you are just multiplying it by the produce dry manure per day per head so that is around this much so it is coming around 1800 kg per day 
So now this is the dry matter produced from the particular farm. So now with the help of this dry matter which is produced from the farm, we can calculate further the volume which is required for the digestion purpose. As dry matter contained in the pigri waste is given here which is only 9% so we can calculate the manure produced so simply what we have to do in this case is like you just divide the dry matter which you have calculated in the previous stage by the dry matter content in the waste so it gives the values equivalent to 20,000 kg per day so this is the manure produce this value is nothing but the dry manure which is produced from the specific farm and as it is given the dry matter contained in the pigri waste is around 9 percent so to get the total manure which is produced in the farm what we need to do in that case is like we have to just divide it by the that percentage of dry matter contained to that particular quantity so once we do that we will get the total manure which is produced from the farm on daily basis so once we know the total manure produced so what we can do that case is like because as we know as we know the density of this particular slurry so what we can do is like we can just divide it by the density of the slurry because if you see this particular value is in the kilogram and since we need to calculate the volume in the meter cube so simply we are just dividing this particular value of manure produced by the slurry density so if you see here this is in the kg per day and this value is kg per meter cube because this is the density so if you see here after dividing this the value comes up to be around 18.34 meter cube per day so this is the slurry volume we can say which is getting generated per day so this is the total slurry which is getting produced on a daily basis so now with the help of this particular slurry we can easily calculate the volume of the digester which is required for the given feed material and then based on that we can fix the sizing of the digester so now let us see how to calculate the remaining steps so based on this 18.34 because as it is mentioned in the example with retention time retention time of say 25 days is given in the example so based on this 25 days retention time so total slurry in the digester can be calculated very easily so the total slurry in the digester is for example this is the slurry which is getting fed inside the digester on daily basis per day suppose you just multiplied by the 25 days so what happened in that case so you will get the total volume in the form of 
so this is what is the total slurry in the digester for 25 days so now if you remember our discussion in this particular module so we assume that the volume of the slurry is nothing but equivalent to the volume of the digester so in this case since the volume is 458.5 meter cube so now you can assume that this is the volume of the digester so the volume of the digester we are considering it as is equal to 458 0.5 meter cube so this is because the slurry volume is considered as equivalent to the volume of the digester so we can refer this as or we can assume that this is the volume of the digester so now another assumption which we have made in the module while discussing about the biogas plant or sizing of the biogas plant as ten percent of digester area is occupied by the is occupied by gas so based on this particular assumption the net size of digester if you need to calculate so the net size of digester equal to because simply what we have to do here is 458.5 into just we are increasing the area by 10% that is multiplied by 1.1 so we will get the value equivalent to 504.35 meter cube so now this value is equal to the net size of the digester considering the 10% of the area which is occupied by the gas even so this is volume of the digester which is equivalent to the volume of the slurry but as we have assume in the particular module that 10% area is always occupied by the gas in the digester so we have to adjust that particular volume while designing accordingly so that's the reason we have just multiplied by the 10% excess area here so that if you see the change in the volume is by this much amount so this is you can say the net size of the digester for the given feed so now once you know this is the net size of the digester which is required to produce the given amount of gas so now based on this now we can calculate the thermal power which is available so if you remember the given data in this example it is mentioned that the biogas yield in this case is given as 0.24 meter cube per kg of dry matter so now based on that we can calculate the gas produced in the digester so if you see the data which we have calculated in the previous slide so we have in this example around 1800 kg per day is the available dry matter for the digestion purpose in the digester so the given gas yield for this case is around 0.24 meter cube per kg of dry matter so now if you multiply this term we get the value equivalent to 432 meter cube per day so this is nothing but gas produce per day now if you see the gas produced and the size of the digester we can easily distinguish between the uh, values because obviously it is higher the net size of the digester is higher than the 
gas produced here because it is occupying some amount of gas in the digester itself and it is continuously being used we assume that the gas produced is being utilized continuously for the thermal power so accordingly this particular volume is sufficient enough for the digester to produce the gas so now based on this gas produced if you calculate the thermal power available then we need to do few more calculation for example thermal power available can be calculated using this equation simply because this is the volume of the biogas because in this case the biogas is used to produce the thermal power so once we know the volume of the biogas which is getting produced per day so we consider that same amount of gas is getting utilized for the production of the thermal power so based on that we are just calculating the thermal power which will be available from this particular output of gas so if you multiply this volume of the gas into its calorific value which is given 20 mega joule per meter cube into the efficiency of the burner now here the efficiency plays a significant role because the efficiency of the burner is 60% so if the input of the gas is mentioned as around like 432 meter cube per day but how much gas is really getting utilized to produce the thermal power it is based on the efficiency of the burner so efficiency of the burner is suppose 60% so we are just multiplying to the entire value by 0.6 and then based on that if you see the calculation so i would say here again the thermal power thermal power available equal to so volume of the gas will just replace the number here which is 432 meter cube per day which we have calculated in the previous step multiplied by the calorific value which is 20 mega joule per meter cube because it is in the meter cube and then the burner efficiency which is around 0.6 so now if you multiply these quantities so in this case this value will go so now we'll have the thermal power we just multiply this quantities here and then we'll get the thermal power available is 5184 mega joule per day so now if we convert this value into kilowatt hour so for that we need to convert the mega joule into the kilowatt hour so what we will do in this case is like we'll just convert this value into kilowatt hour so 1 mega joule equal to 0.28 kilowatt hour so now accordingly if you convert this value here we we'll get the value in the form of 1440 kilowatt hour per day so this is per day basis now if you just convert this value into a kilowatt so what we have to do in this case is like just you have to convert this value into the hour basis so we just simply divided by the 24 hour basis and then we'll get the value in the kilowatt that is 60 kilowatt so the thermal power which is available from the produced gas is around 60 kilowatt amount of the thermal power which will be available from the specific biogas plant with volume of the biogas if you consider or you can say the volume of the biogas which is getting produced from the digester is suppose this much so based on that around 60 kilowatt amount of power can be extracted here by this way we can practice few more examples in the similar line if we just change the waste 
from suppose piggery waste to cattle manure in the form of like cow manure also. So, there will be a slight changes in the values which are given there because as I shown the table in the previous lecture even, in that table we gave the values of the specific feedstock and what is the biogas yield for the specific feedstock as well. So, once you note down those values accordingly, you can calculate the volume of the digester for the specific feedstock. So, this is how is the volume of the digester we can estimate based on the given data as well as we can assume certain values if it is not mentioned in the example, but the value should be in the range which are discussed in this particular module. So, based on that we can easily calculate the volume of the digester and if it is required to calculate the thermal power available, similarly you can also calculate the thermal power available from the specific output of the gas. So, now let us discuss one more example which is slightly different than what we have discussed earlier. So, this will also give one more attempt to understand like if the given data is not in the specific form, so we can assume certain values. So, those assumption what we have done in this particular example, the so assumption will be given for the practice examples as well. So, same assumptions can be used to solve the example. And if you see this example, it is mostly based on the engine generator system and it is running on a biogas which is installed to produce around 5 kilowatt of electric power. So, it is producing 5 kilowatt amount of electric power and based on this we need to estimate the volume of digester of the biogas plant if the cattle waste is used as the feed material. So, for this particular case it is mentioned that the cattle waste. So, now calorie value of this particular biogas mentioned here is now suppose this much. So, which is slightly different than which we have discussed in the previous example. That is the reason I mentioned it is all based on the composition of the biogas. So, there is a slight variation in this particular values. In this case the generator efficiency is 85 percent and the engine efficiency is 28 percent because here the engine is attached with the generator. So, generator also has this efficiency as well as the engine also has some specific efficiency. So, we need to take into consideration both these efficiencies to calculate the size of the digester. Apart from this, there are certain approximate rules which we need to consider for sizing the biogas plant. So, in this case if you see here, it is mentioned that 1 kg of dry waste it produces approximately 0.9 meter cube of biogas. Similarly, second assumption 1 kg of fresh cattle waste it contains again 9 percent dry biodegradable mass. And third assumption 1 kg of fresh cattle waste has volume of about 0 0.75 liters. So, this is also mentioned here and 1 kg of fresh cattle waste needs an equal amount volume of water for preparing the slurry. So, this is one additional point which is mentioned or given in this example that even if the fresh cattle waste has a volume of 0 0.75 liter which is mentioned there. So, it is mentioned that to utilize this fresh cattle waste an equal amount of water still need to be added in this particular example. Clear? So, that is the reason even the dry matter content is mentioned here is 9 percent, but still because the fresh cattle waste has only volume of around like 0 0.75 liter. So, that is the reason it is specifically mentioned here that to this waste an equal amount of water need to be added to make it a slurry. And the last is the point about the HRT of slurry in a biogas plant. As we know it varies from 40 to 55 days, but for this example the HRT is considered as the 40 days. So, now with this given data we need to calculate the volume of digester of a biogas plant. So, let us try to solve this example again. If you see in this example the power output is around like 
5 kilowatt amount of power is the output from this particular engine generator system. So, to get 5 kilowatt amount of power, what is the power input which is required to the engines and generator system that need to calculate first. So, based on that, the power input to the engine is suppose 5 kilowatt amount of power divided by the efficiency of both the system that is generator and the engine. Why it is so? Because as I mentioned this is the generator efficiency and this is the engine efficiency. right? So, now based on this efficiency we need to calculate the exact power input to the engine and if you see the value which comes out here is around 21 kilowatt because this is 5 kilowatt amount of power which is the output from the engine generator system. So, now to this input power which is a 21 kilowatt. So, for this power we need to calculate the quantity of biogas which is required to input this much amount of power to the engine. So, now quantity of biogas required how we calculate? So, we have 21 kilowatt amount of power. So, based on 21 kilowatt amount of power which is the input to the engine, we can calculate the quantity of the gas which is required. So, now for this we need to simply divide it by the calorific value of the gas which is 25,000. Now, here it is in kg per meter cube. So, here it is kilowatt. So, kilowatt is nothing but you can convert it into kilojoule per second and then once you convert it and after dividing these values, we will get the value in the form of 84 meter cube because this kilowatt is nothing but is joule per second. So, this is the conversion, right. So, 1 watt is equal to 1 joule per second. So, using this conversion, we have just converted this particular value. So, we will got the value in the form of 0.00084 meter cube per second. So, for continuous operation, we need to convert this value on the per day basis. So, for continuous operation, Biogas required is nothing but equal to 0.0084. We have just converted the value on per day basis, which is coming around. So, once we multiply these values, so it comes out around 72.5 meter cube per. So, this is biogas which is required for continuous operation on a daily basis. So, this is the quantity of the biogas which is required. So, based on this now we can calculate the dry cattle manure which is required. So, it is simply we can calculate because we know because this is the value of 72.5 is the biogas which is required that is 72.5 meter cube per day. So, the dry cattle manure required is 72.5 divided by we are just simply dividing it by the 
point nine because in this case if you see the first point in the example which is mentioned there that one kg of dry cattle manure it almost produces around like point nine meter cube of a gas. So based on this because we know seventy two point five is nothing but amount of the biogas which is required and one kg of cattle dry manure it produces around point nine meter cube of a gas. So you are simply using this conversion here so that we can get the value in the form of kilogram per day, so which is around eighty point So this conversion, if you are not clear, so I am just explaining again. So this is seventy two point five is the biogas which is required for the continuous operation on daily basis. So once we know this is the biogas which is required on a daily basis, so the first rule which is given in this example is one kg of dry cattle manure it produces around point nine meter cube of gas. So based on that, we have just converted this into a dry cattle manure, which is really required for the production of this much amount of the gas, so which comes out around eighty point five five. So once we know the dry cattle manure which is required, so we can simply calculate the mass of fresh. Cattle manure which is required for the given plant. So, in this case, it is very simple. What we are doing is like in this case. So, this is the dry cattle manure amount which we know, which is eighty point five five kg per day. So, simply we are dividing it by about nine percent of the. This is the dry matter. So, simply we are Dividing it by nine percent, which is point zero zero nine, which is the dry matter contained in the cattle manure. So once you divide this, we we'll get the value in the form of eight ninety five kg per day, because this value is in the kg per day. Similarly, once you are dividing it by the dry matter contained in the cattle manure so to calculate the fresh mass of cattle manure which is produced on daily basis what we have done in this case is the dry cattle manure produce value is around this much and in this particular manure there is a 9% of dry matter content so simply we have just divide those values by the 0.09 here so once you divide this by 0.09 what happens is like It is getting converted into the fresh manure, which is produced on daily basis. So you have just simply divided by the nine percent. So this is the amount of fresh cattle manure which is produced on daily basis. So if you see one more rule in this example, it is mentioned that although the cattle manure in this case, so one kg of cattle manure has a volume of around point seven five liter, and to make the slurry for this particular cattle manure there is equal amount of water which need to be added so that we can convert it into the slurry so if you convert this into the volume so the volume of fresh cattle manure which is produced is equal to because this is the value which is given in the example simply it is getting multiplied here that 0.75 liters is nothing but the volume of the cattle manure we are just simplifying it to convert into the volume so after multiplication of this quantities it comes out around 671.2 for you liters per day so this is the volume of 
fresh cattle manure this is mass of the fresh cattle manure we have just simply converted into the volume because then we can calculate the volume in the meter cube for the digester as well so once this is the volume of the fresh cattle manure which is produced which is 0.75 liter which is mentioned there for 1 kg of cattle manure which is mentioned has it has a volume of around 0.75 liter so we have around this much amount of cattle manure so this much amount of cattle manure which is in kilogram per day it has been converted into only a liters per day by this conversion so now let us calculate the volume of the slurry so to calculate the volume of slurry now as it is mentioned equal amount of water is added to get slurry so amount is nothing but suppose here 671 so to get the volume of the slurry what we have to do we have to just simply multiplied by the 2 so that equal amount of water we are adding into this slurry so the volume of slurry comes out is equal to 1342 point liters per day so this is the volume of slurry which is required for the specific plant now consider the retention time of the slurry retention time of in a biogas gas plant has 40 days so as it is given as 40 this simply what we are doing is in this case is 1342.5 multiplied by 40 so simply multiplying this quantity get the answer as 53700 which is in liters so this is consider as the volume of the volume of digester because if you know this is the volume of the slurry which is required on the daily basis so as the retention time of the slurry which is mentioned here is a 40 days so simply we are multiplying it by the 40 days so that will get the total volume of the slurry if this is the total volume of the slurry so the total volume of the slurry is equivalent to the volume of the digester if you convert this value into the meter cube so we'll get it as 1 53.7 meter cube and then as this is the volume of the digester so to calculate the net size of the digester so you can again multiply it by the 1.1 so that you can get the net size of the digester as well so whenever it is mentioned that to calculate the net size of the digester as well so you can just simply multiply it by the 1.1 to get the net size of the digester because as we have mentioned already in the previous example as well because the 10% of the volume is occupied by the gas so this is the volume of the digester so to calculate the volume of the gas which will get occupied in the digester so for that reason we are considering the 10% excess volume of the digester so in that case here once you multiplied by the 1.1 again you can get the net size of the digester so that you can do as well while solving the example so you can calculate that so that we already done in the previous example so i am just not repeating here so that you can do that particular calculation so in this lecture if you see here we have seen two different approaches to calculate the volume of the digester similarly based on the volume of the digester and the gas produced from the digester if it is need to calculate the thermal power available 
so we can also calculate the thermal power which is available from the specific output of the gas from the given digester so like this there will be a similar kind of examples will be given in the assignment to solve so you can easily solve this kind of example i guess so this is all about today's lecture if in this lecture if you have any doubt you just feel free to contact me at vvgoud@iitg.ac.in thank you